I'm gonna go ahead and resize this temporarily just by mousing over the uh, border between the two tools, clicking and dragging. I'm gonna leave it open, but I'm gonna move it off to the side so that we can see the calendar uh, easily or more easily, I suppose. Okay, now let's talk about how we can uh, eliminate some of the noise in the calendar. All right, so let's go ahead and let's actually remove the sorting. Here we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like for today. So first of all, with the calendar, you still have the search bar. Okay, so if you type in Apple, for example, like we did in the uh, news feed, it will do the same thing here. Okay, so I had the date filtered to today, but when I type in an individual stock, it will show you the history of that. And the same thing is true here. You can, of course, add multiple stocks. You can also add watch lists. You can do it the exact same way I just showed you on the newsfeed. Okay, so that functionality still exists here. But the difference between the newsfeed and the calendar here is that we've got the exact same data laid out in this really nice table format. So let me show you some different ways that you can eliminate some of the noise here. Uh, again, looking at the date selector, which is this little box right here at the top. If you look right under the search bar, you actually have four buttons. You have a reset filters button. You have a date selector button, which when you click on opens up a calendar. You have a drop down, which allows you to change to the different calendars that are offered to you. Again, all of these examples exist within the analyst ratings one for today. And then finally, oops, excuse me, you have the watch list button where you can select a watch list uh, right from the toolbar here. But being in the calendar and having these columns means you also have some other available filters to you. And that's what I want to show you. All right. So let's say, Luke, again, here's today. There is a ton of content here today. And I totally understand this is too much for one person to go through, especially in the morning prior to the market open. We've got limited time to be able to go over some of this stuff. Like I can't possibly go through all this information. So let's limit some of the noise and make our job easier. First pro tip here, number one, if you wanna just start with something that has been, you know, like what is something that got the most ratings today? Or what is something that might be a little bit more popular today? Let, let me show you. If you click on symbol, what you're doing is you're sorting by that column. So it's gonna put all of the symbols right next to each other. Well, look at what this does. This is a very, very easy way to find out if there are multiple ratings for a company. If we look at the top one here, Arch Capital Group, ticker ACGL, there's one rating. And then right after that, there's ACHC and then Adobe. And then ADP is the next one here. There was actually three ratings. And this might be a very, very easy way to kind of eyeball what's going on here. Okay, so here we go. CFLT, look how many ratings there were here. All right, this is going to be confluent. There were a bunch, uh, there's a reiteration, the rest of them were maintains, one of them was underperform. The, you can very quickly see how different days have different volumes of analyst ratings. And it's very, very simple. All I did was sort the symbol column ascending. If, if I know some of the symbols that I'm looking for at the end of the alphabet, sort it descending. Here, Z-E-T-A had five, excuse me, six different ratings here today. And this kind of spanned the board, right? We had a downgrade. We had a reiterate. We had several maintains. There are some positive ratings, a varying uh, degree of, of price targets, the whole nine yards. Okay. So that's tip number one is simply sorting, right? If you want to start with things that are like all the buys, well, here you go. You just sort on the rating. Okay. But there's other filtering that you can do here. And let's examine some of that. All right. I'm going to clear the uh, filters off. You can clear the filters off simply by cycling through uh, the column header. Let's actually use the filters menu to, again, make this a little bit easier. Okay. So the filters menu, and this, this is what holds up a lot of people. So the fact that you guys are all seeing this here uh, should put you one step ahead. The filters uh, button here is kind of tucked along the right margin. All right, so here's the calendar tool. You should be able to see my mouse. The right margin here, you actually have two buttons. You have one for columns where you can pick and choose what columns you want to see. So if the day high or low or the 52-week high or low is important to you, you might want to turn those on. I have them off for this example, but you can do that. Uh, it's also worth noting that the actual name of the analyst is a column that's available to you. It's off in this example, but that option is there for you. And then you also 
have the ability to filter on all of those columns that you just saw. So if I click on the filters button, here are the same columns, but this actually allows me to add different filters. And there's two here that I wanna point to. We're gonna start with these. Right at the bottom here, there's a sector filter. So if you know what filter you wanna, if you know what sector you wanna see the different analyst ratings for, go ahead and type it in here. But there's also this market cap one, and this is the one that I'm gonna focus on. So again, we're looking at this list here, a huge amount of data. A lot of these tickers I don't really recognize. They're maybe stocks that I haven't heard of or don't really follow. So let's start here with the biggest stocks, right? We're, let's start with the stocks that are arguably gonna be the most important and have the most impact on the market. So I'm gonna open up the market cap filter and I'm gonna put 50 and then the letter B in here to denote billion, all right? So I wanna see what this is saying in English is only show me analyst ratings for stocks that have a market cap greater than $50 billion, all right? So let's go ahead and apply that, tuck the filters menu away, and now let's look how this has changed. Well, gosh, first of all, we have cut the data down by, it, at least a factor of 10. I mean, I was scrolling. I, I was using my mouse wheel to scroll through this window before when it was unfiltered. Now I have maybe a page and a half. So right away, just by kind of limiting this to some of the bigger stocks, we've done a tremendous amount of noise filtering here. Also worth noting that even after you apply this filter, that tip that I just gave you about using column headers to sort is still viable. If I click here on symbol, look at what happens. It's still sorting the exact same way, but it's it's only sorting from the pool that matches our filter. What jumps off the page for you here? Meta. That is the correct answer. I'm not even going to wait for the correct answer because it's so obvious. Look how many ratings there were here on Meta. Why is this the case? Well, first of all, if we mouse over it, Meta's up 5%. Why is Meta up 5%? If I click on it, it opens it in the details tool. This is cannot get easier than this. Meta shares are trading higher after the company reported better than expected Q2 financial results and issued Q3 guidance above estimates. There's literally a, a area in pro that's telling you why the stock is moving. Now, just by reading that, ah, they reported earnings. So analysts are coming in doing a whole bunch of re-ratings here today. Here they all are. It makes sense why Meta is uh, the most populous one here, okay? And if I take a look down here, um, we got Altria, Procter & Gamble, Public Storage, PayPal, Qualcomm. I mean, these are all stocks that we hear about in the news cycle all of the time, okay? So now I can kind of see what are analysts saying about some of the stocks or some of these bigger stocks. Of course, this example works in the other direction too, right? So if I go less than 50 billion. Okay, let's do that. Now, here are the rest of them. Now, remember using the filter, look how much there is here. So you, I wanted to point out that you can do this any way that you want, but obviously that 50 billion threshold, that is going to eliminate a lot of smaller stocks. So let's go ahead and actually adjust this filter. Let's do less than, instead of 50 billion, let's do less than 10 billion. Okay. And now let's see. And uh, there's still kind of a lot here, but we're really doing a good job. We're using market cap here to hack away at these things. Now you don't need, you don't have to just use one. You can actually use multiple filters here. So let's stick with our less than $10 billion market cap filter, but let's say, okay, so this is great, but I want to see the bullish things. We've got our market cap figured out. We want to look for some smaller stocks. Maybe we'll get a bigger move there. But now there's a lot of stuff still here. Now let's just examine the bullish stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go back to filters and I'm going to take a look for the filter for action on security. Okay. Where is that action on security? Okay. We're going to do uh, contains upgrades, right? So we're going to go ahead and just type up. I don't even have to type in upgrades. Let's just start with up. Look what we just did with just entering two letters. All right. I'm going to temporarily close this. Okay. So we have upgrades and uh, there were only four on some of these smaller stocks here. Uh, looks like day one, biopharmaceuticals, first national, uh, Pegasus systems, and then Silgan. Okay. So Right away, if we're just going to look for the new action on security, right? We want to see new ratings. Not they didn't maintain a previous rating and maybe change the price target. We want the bullish, the most bullish of the bullish, right? We want the new upgrades. And you can see here in this case, 
It's only giving us four things. Three of them were upgraded to buy. Giddy up. These are maybe where I'm going to start some of my research. Um, by the way, it's worth noting here, if you want to do research, simply clicking on a ticker loads up the details. And in the details, you can examine a bevy of information like short interest, key data, who from the government may or may not own that, what insiders are doing with the stock, what the financials look like. Um, this hasn't actually reported one. That's kind of cool. Uh, the chart, you can do your charting right here in Pro. So there's just a ton of stuff that you can do right from in here when you're actually doing it. But look how easy that was to go from a gigantic scrollable list of analyst ratings to just a couple here that might be really bullish. And again, you don't have to stick with the bullish ones. This can be whatever you want. Um, whether it's upgrades, downgrades, outperform, whatever the rating is, you can use these filters the exact same way. And this can really kind of help you filter out some of the noise. Now, remember, we talked about that reset filters button. Uh, if you're done or if you've applied six or seven filters, oh, I can't remember all the stuff I did. Don't worry. Just hit reset. It'll take you right back to the default. You could start over here or maybe build again. Okay. So um, I hope this type of thing is helpful. Um one of the complaints that we get, maybe not even a complaint, was one of the feedback items that we get from users, in particular users that are newer to this is, gosh, there's a ton of stuff here. How do I make sense of it? The first thing that I recommend that you do to make sense of that stuff is cut out the noise, right? Start with the stuff that you really want to know about. And, and I, I tell this to people about their trading too. Like if you're just starting trading, trade the things that you know right? Trade. If you're someone that reads about, you know, reads like Apple nine to five Mac and PC gamer, and you're up on all the technology and your, your friends are constantly coming to you to ask you about what computer to buy and, and this and that you obviously have an advantage there. Your, your technology inclined. So maybe start with that. You can start trading those stocks and then you can start actually following what these different uh, companies are going to say about these stocks because you're likely going to understand that. Mm -hmm.